my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. If you missed any of the previous days of Creepy Westeros, Essos, and Beyond, no worries. I'll link the complete playlist in the top right hand corner. Red eyes peering in the darkness, seeing everything from everywhere at once, as clear as if it were unfolding in front of their very eyes. Red eyes in the darkness, red eyes of the weirwood, red eyes of the green seer, red eyes of the ghosts, red eyes of the ravens, red eyes of the priestess, green eyes see a lot, red eyes see the most. In the Riverlands, south of River Run and north of Acorn Hall sits a tall hill, High Heart. In its prime, High Heart belonged to the children of the forest. The hilltop of High Heart was crowned with a grove of weirwood trees, old and wise and undisturbed, weirwoods as ancient as any in Westeros. This place was held especially holy to the children of the forest and the first men alike. However, when the Andals came, they brought their seven gods with them. The mother, the father, the warrior, the smith, the maiden, the crone, and the stranger. The seven-pointed star went everywhere the Andals went. Born before them on their shields and banners, embroidered on their surcoats, sometimes tattooed into their very flesh. In the devotion to their seven gods, the conquerors looked upon the old gods of the first men and the children of the forest as little more than demons and fell upon their weirwood groves sacred to them with steel and fire, destroying the great white trees wherever they found them and hacking out their carved faces. When the Andal King Arag, the Kinslayer, surrounded the hill, the children emerged to defend it calling down clouds of ravens and armies of wolves, or so the legend tells us. Even the first men fought by their sides, yet neither tooth nor talon was matched for steel axes of the Andals. The Andals slaughtered the green seers, the beast, and the first men alike, and raised beside High Heart a hill of corpses half again as high. Today, High Heart is crowned with 31 stumps where the ancient weirwoods once stood their power still lingers. The river folk claim the ancient hill is still haunted by ghosts of the children of the forest, and to this day, the place is shunned. High Heart is where Arya meets the ghost of High Heart. A tiny little woman, a foot shorter than Arya and older than Old Nan, all stooped and wrinkled and leaning on a gnarled black cane. Her white hair was so long it came almost to the ground. When the wind gusted, it blew around her head in a fine cloud. Her flesh was whiter, the color of milk, and it seemed to Arya that her eyes were red. The ghost of High Heart is rumored to be a child of the forest, an old one, and she has prophetic dreams. The old gods stir and will not let me sleep, she heard the woman say. I dreamt I saw a shadow with a burning heart, butchering a golden stag, I. I dreamt of a man without a face, waiting on a bridge that swayed and swung. On his shoulder perched a drowned crow with seaweed hanging from his wings. I dreamt of a roaring river and a woman that was a fish, dead she drifted, with red tears on her cheeks, but when her eyes did open, oh, I woke from terror. All this I dreamt and more. This is our first red-eyed character with a connection to the Weirwoods and the Children of the Forest. Our second red-eyed character with a direct connection to the Weirwoods is Brendan Rivers. Lord Bloodraven, he was called. Great bastard of Aegon the Unworthy. He had Targaryen blood and the blood of House Blackwood of Raven Tree Hall. Raven Tree Hall is also located in the Riverlands in Blackwood Vale. The castle's godswood contain a dead ancient weirwood of colossal size. Every evening at dusk, hundreds of ravens come and roost all night on the dead weirwood as they have for thousands of years. Dunk saw Blood Raven once, and this is what he says. Garbed in smoke and scarlet with dark sister on his hip, 
His pallid skin and bone white hair made him look a living corpse. Across his cheek and chin spread a wine stained birthmark that was supposed to resemble a red raven. He had one eye and that one red. The other was an empty socket, the gift Bittersteel had given him upon the red grass field. Yet it seemed to Dunk that both eyes had looked right through his skin down to his very soul. Brendan Rivers is also the three-eyed raven and is referred to as the last green seer. He is directly connected to the old gods, the weirwood, and the children. In Dance of Dragons, Blood Raven tells Bran how the gods mark the ones they have chosen to give their gifts to. Those you call the children of the forest have eyes as golden as the sun, but once in a great while one is born amongst them with eyes as red as blood, or green as the moss on a tree in the heart of the forest. By these signs do the gods mark those they have chosen to receive the gift. The chosen ones are not robust, and their quick years upon the earth are few, for every song must have its balance, but once inside the wood they linger long a thousand eyes, a hundred skins, wisdom deep as the roots of ancient trees, green seers. The next character in our story that has red eyes is not so easy to connect to weirwoods, and that is Melisandre. Melisandre of Asai, sorceress, shadowbinder, and priestess of Rolor, the Lord of Light, the Heart of Fire, the god of flame and shadow. Red priestess that gazes into the fires and deciphers visions she is shown within the flames. She wore red, head to heel, a long loose gown of flowing silk as bright as fire, with dag sleeves and deep slashes in the bodice that showed glimpses of a darker blood red fabric beneath. Around her throat was a red gold choker tighter than any maester's chain, ornamented with a single great ruby. Her hair was not the orange or strawberry color of common red-haired men, but a deep burnished copper that shone in the light of torches. Even her eyes were red, but her skin was smooth and white, unblemished, pale as cream. Slender she was, graceful, taller than most knights, with full breasts, a narrow waist, and a heart-shaped face. Men's eyes that once found her did not quickly look away, not even a maester's eyes. Many called her beautiful. She was not beautiful. She was red and terrible and red, said Maester Crescent. Melisandre says she was sold as a child, a slave. In her first POV recollections, it seems she was sold at an auction block. A child named Melanie of Lot 7, sold at auction. But if Melisandre was sold at auction as a child, could she really be from Asai? There are no children in Asai. It says this in the world of ice and fire. Maybe she just passed through Asai on her way to the Red Temple in Volantis, and Asai is the last thing she remembers. We know Melisandre is old, ancient even, years beyond count. She has the red eyes of a green seer. She's more powerful than ever when she's at the wall closer to the groves of weirwoods. But how and why? Hardhome had been halfway toward becoming a town, the only true town north of the wall, until the night 600 years ago when hell had swallowed it. Its people had been carried off into slavery and slaughtered for meat, depending on which version of the tale you believed. Their homes and halls consumed in conflagration that burned so hot that watchers on the wall far to the south had thought the sun was rising in the north. Afterward, ashes rained down on the haunted forest and shivering sea alike for almost half a year. Traders reported finding only nightmarish devastation where Hardhome had stood. A landscape of charred trees and burned bones, waters choked with swollen corpses, blood-chilling shrieks echoing from the cave mouths that popped the great cliff that loomed above the settlement. I think Melisandre was taken from Hardhome as a child by slavers. Melisandre is a wildling, green seer, kissed by fire and over 600 years old. Instead of going east to Essos, the slavers went west to Asai. Maybe they only stopped in Asai to port. Later, Melisandre was sold to the Red Temple. Further evidence that supports my theory is this. The Red Priestess shuddered. 
Blood trickled down her thigh, black and smoking. The fire was inside her in agony and ecstasy, filling her, searing her, transforming her. Shimmers of heat traced patterns on her skin, insistent as a lover's hand. Strange voices called to her from days long past. Melanie, she heard a woman cry. A man's voice called, Lot Seven. She was weeping and her tears were flame and still she drank it in. Snowflakes swirled from a dark sky and ashes rose to meet them. The gray and the white whirling around each other as flaming arrows arced above a wooden wall and dead things shambled silent through the cold beneath a great gray cliff where fires burned inside a hundred caves. Then the wind rose and the white mist came sweeping in and possibly cold and one by one the fires went out. Afterward, only the skulls remained. The vision she has shown is presumably the impeding attack on Hardhome, but is it really or was she seeing 600 years ago? Directly before she is shown this vision, she has a flashback of being sold. Melanie, Lot 7. Melisandre's questionable beginning, red eyes, red hair, her age, the fact that her power is stronger in the north near the weirwoods makes me believe she too is a green seer connected to the old gods and the children of the forest by blood. The next character in our story that has red eyes is Ghost. Ghost is the only wolf out of his siblings that has red eyes. Ghost also has the ability of knowing things before they happen, a sixth sense. He knew about the attack on the fist of the first men. It was Ghost that led John to the war horn in the dragon glass. It is in my firm opinion that Ghost and his siblings were sent to the Stark children by the children of the forest or the old gods. The wolves markings all coincide with the markings of the children. The children have eyes as gold as the sun, just like Grey Wind, Nymeria, Lady, and Summer. The green seers are marked with green or red eyes. Shaggy Dog's eyes were green and Ghost's eyes are red. Ghost is even colored like the weirwood, the white bark and the red leaves. Our last character that has red eyes in our story is Drogon. While we know the birth of dragons was somewhat a miracle, most of what causes Danny to do what she did in order to birth her dragons was sent to her in dreams, dragon dreams. But Melisandre says that dreams are whispers from the great other. Melisandre had spent the night in her chair by the fire as she often did. With Stannis gone, her bed saw little use. She had no time for sleep with the weight of the world upon her shoulders and she feared to dream. Sleep is a little death. Dreams the whispering of the other who would drag us all into his eternal night. But who is the other? Who is the great other? I think the weirwoods, the old gods, and yet Drogon is just another one of their instruments. Black scaled and red eyed, born from a dream, a gift from the old gods. In my opinion, it's safe to say that red eyes in the darkness can only belong to the weirwoods, the old gods. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. See you tomorrow.